this kind of fallacious argument. <laughs> well, we do it and the Jews do it. Well, what about all the things that the Jews do that you don't do? Exactly. Like not eating camels. <laughs> you know, who are the Janjaweed? Who are the Janjaweed? Who are the Janjaweed? Notice he's gone silent. In fact, yeah. When you hear me quote the verse in the Bible yeah. that commands Christians to kill, yes. I invite you all to come and spit upon me. Where does Jesus teach me to have slaves? He doesn't. But Muhammad had slaves. Muhammad sold slaves. Muhammad allowed his followers to... B and he's nodding his head, he's agreeing, he's not bothering to deny it. He said that one plus one sorry, plus one is sorry. not one, I'm it's sorry. always three. Yeah, he said so that. let me ask every Muslim here, yeah. if I have That's a half Quran, yeah. a Dori Quran, and a Wash Quran, how many Qurans do I have? Answer, answer, answer. There you go! <laughs> one. One. There you go! There you go! Did you, did you enjoy the Brexit? Oh, is he alright? Yeah, it's okay. Yep. We're okay. rolling. We're rolling. Uh, okay. Action. So I, I, I want to talk. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about um, Brexit and what happens right. next for the UK. Alright. Because as of yesterday, the United Kingdom has formally left the European institutions, that we're in a transition period but the ultimate destination is that the UK will carve itself out a different path, not as part of a club of 28 countries together. Now, what, what, what does that mean for us? What, what, what comes next for us? The reality is that Brexit is, is not a finished deal. There is a, now a, a, a treaty that has to be negotiated about our relationship to the European Union. Yeah. And that relationship is obviously going to be one based fundamentally around trade. Because the European Union doesn't have a concept of a common European culture. <laughs> and it doesn't have a concept of a common European culture because the European Union was built upon a rejection of Europe's Christian identity, right. which is the only thing that Europeans actually have in common. Exactly. We don't have ethnos in common, exactly. we don't have language in common, uh, we don't have economy in common, uh, we don't have forms of government in common. Uh, the only thing we ever had in common was our religion and the EU tried to establish itself without the idea of a, a, a Christian identity. Now, we've, the, the mantra of the Brexiteers was, we want our country back. Yeah. And what they mean by that is that we wanted our sovereignty back. I'm Kuala Lumpur, you're not allowed to put your posters there, I'm Kuala Lumpur. I'm Kuala Lumpur. The police are going to come and take it away again, I'm Kuala Lumpur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> one of the brighter characters at Speaker's Corner. Yeah, we love, so, we love, gonna love uh, One of the bright luminaries yes. giving a lot of colour to what it is to come to Speaker's Corner. <laughs> so in terms of in yeah. terms of what happens next, yeah. now that we have claimed sovereignty back, the next challenge that this movement that has grown out of the Brexit campaign faces is to defend the union because the next major threat to the idea of the United Kingdom is a resurgent civic nationalism in Northern Ireland and Scotland. So if you are part of the Brexit movement, if you are part of that movement that is busy smashing up the, the structures of our establishment, you now need to get behind the idea of unionism. There needs now a new party to form in Scotland, the Unionist Party of Scotland. The Conservatives, Labour and Liberal Democrats who are for the Union need to form a Unionist Party. And that's the next big challenge 
for this movement of people that are trying to reform what it lives to be within the United Kingdom. That's the next big challenge. But the challenge that comes next after that is that now we have our country back, we need to reclaim our culture. Because the reality is, 70 years of liberal progressive thought has washed away the historical identity of the people of this island. They have washed away its traditions. If I said Whit Sunday to you, how many of you would know what I mean? If I said Pentecost to you, how many would know what I mean? We have lost our traditions and our sense of ourselves because liberal progressive thought has washed away our identity and has sought to reform that identity not upon our Christian culture and traditions but upon a civic identity that has no connection to historical culture at all. That is based purely upon the idea of attachment to civic institutions like the army, the armed forces, the NHS, the parliament, democracy, and the ideas of John Locke and the rights of man. These ideas were a rupture within the cultural continuum of Europe. They were a rupture that broke us away from the organic evolution of our culture. They were revolutionary precisely because they disconnected the idea of culture from the idea of law and sought to recast laws apart from culture and to reform culture on the basis of law. Now that we have regained our sovereignty, we have the opportunity to regain our culture. Now for sure, that presents us with difficulties and I'm going to outline the chief amongst those difficulties. I'm Bob. Over the last 60 years, maybe a bit longer, the British government has been following a socio-political doctrine called multiculturalism. Multiculturalism is based upon the idea that there is no absolute truth, there is no real right and wrong, that there is only a perspective and that within that perspective, different groups have the right to live out their culture according to their own traditions. This plurality of cultures, this model of multiculturalism is clearly failing. It is failing because we see that those cultures do not, cannot and will not live side by side. The great sharing of the Irish stew of cultures has not occurred. We have not been enriched by ideas from Islam and the Muslim community have not been enriched by the ideas of Christianity. However, as Christians, we believe in a form of multiculturalism that is based upon a cohesive tradition of values and beliefs that can express itself variably by different ethnos, by different groups of people together. We have seen the failure of multiculturalism in places like Rotherham, in places like Hull, in the cities of the north, where communities live separate lives in parallel and where English communities who have been denied any sense of their own identity historically have been told that they must make space for other cultures, for the Islamic culture. And you see the frustration that emerges from that 
that is constantly being sought to be capitalised on by ethno-nationalists who seek to stir up division along lines of ethnicity. Christianity, a muscular, robust church that is comfortable with conflict, able to stand upon its own values and doctrines and beliefs and demand space for itself to follow those beliefs and those values without hindrance or incumbents from the state can offer a vision of society that moves radically different from the idea of liberal, progressive, secular ideology. We do not need Sharia law in the UK. We are not enriched by Sharia law. We are not enriched by the failure of liberal pluralism and it is time that our people rejected those ideas root and branch and returned to a form of traditionalism rooted in Christian paradigms and meta-narratives. Perfect. And that is where we need to go as a culture. That means that the church must offer a vision for society that is in contrast to and different from that offered by liberal pluralists yeah. who turn a blind eye <laughs> to the persecution suffered by Christian minorities across the Islamic world, who turn a blind eye to the persecution of Christians by Muslims in the UK. Yes, that's right. In Iraq or Syria or, or Libya, what are you talking about? You're talking nonsense. You're hypocrites. So, you have the imperialist mind of the British Empire. I don't no, ascribe to the British yeah, Empire. <laughs> so, the reality is, well, the reality as evolved. Christians, yeah. must counter this kind of narrative yeah. that is put out by Muslims yeah, yeah. that they are the victims. Yeah, the fact of the matter is, there are anti Christian pogroms that happen in Egypt today. They happen in Pakistan today. There has been an anti-Christian pogrom in Sudan today. There has been anti-Christian pogroms in Syria and Iraq. Christians are persecuted in Palestine. We must tell our own story to counter the narrative of the liberal progressives yep. who would disarm us from the Islamists who seek to shame us into silence on challenging Sharia law politically, economically, socially, culturally and religiously. And that begins with the recovery of our own Christian identity. Not the kind of limp-wristed identity of the liberal Christian, the cultural Christian, who seeks to bend the Christian faith around the culture he finds, but rather a attitude, an attitude of the Christian that seeks to establish a culture on Christian values, on Christian doctrine, on Christian morality, and offers that culture as an alternative. That's right. He says that I lied. He says that I lied. He said that Bob. He said that Bob. How many become mosque every day? He says that I lied about the persecution yeah. of Christians in Egypt. Yeah, he said, that, oh, he he said, said that. I lied. Yeah, he said that. Get out your phones yeah, get out, get out. right now. <laughs> Get yeah, out get your out. phones, yeah, yeah. every one of you, yeah, yeah. right now, get out, get out, get it out. and Google the words yeah. persecution <laughs> of the Coptic Church. Yes. Get out your phones right now yeah, and check. check the persecution check. of Christians in Egypt. Right. 
and see who is lying. Exactly. He is lying. How many Muslims are killing How many did he kill in Somalia? How many Muslims are killing in Somalia? How many people did the British Empire kill in Somalia? This is the first country. You're a liar. About the persecution. You're a liar. Show it. Show it. Look. 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 Who is lying? Exactly. <laughs> you okay. in Sudan? No. Oh, it's the beach. He mentioned Sudan. Oh, yeah, he did. He mentioned Sudan. Wait, Bob. Battery check. Pause. Sudan. He, he mentioned Sudan, yeah. But did he tell you yeah. about the 18 year long jihad <laughs> that killed? Two million Christians in South Sudan. Two million Christians died in South Sudan in a war that lasted 18 years. Wow. Wow, look. Because the Arab North decided yeah, yeah. from South Sudan to Islamicize the Christian an animist south christians you have to tell your stories exactly you have to claim your history and you have to tell the liberals they were wrong they were wrong about multiculturalism we christians offer a Christian paradigm in which Pakistani Christians, Egyptian Christians, Sudanese Christians, English Christians, Italian Christians, Greek Christians, Indian Christians, Indonesian Christians can celebrate a unified culture because they share the same values and beliefs. Right. You cannot make space for values like dimitude. You cannot make space for the idea of the caliphate. You must stand up against that kind of value system and world view. That's right. What do you do to Somalia? What do you talk about Somalia? Listen, what do you do to Somalia? 1977 and took Christian minority. So, any questions before I move on to my next topic? You've got a question. You're from Sudan. You're from South Sudan. From South Sudan. Yes, yes. Okay, what's the question? You say now we need to kill the Christian there, yeah? Yes, you say that, yes. But now nobody there. So there was no war in South Sudan. I can't. Okay. So the brother is saying. Yeah. The brother is saying. What is he saying, Bob? That the Janjaweed. Yeah. You know, who are the Janjaweed? Hey, who are the Janjaweed? Who are the Janjaweed? No, 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 no. Who are the Janjaweed? Notice he's gone silent. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone silent. I'm not going silent. He, he, he yeah. said yeah, you're lying. that it was just the government. Okay. But the Janjaweed are an Islamic tribe yeah. that are waging a jihad okay. against Christians. Wow. They killed Christians. Ooh. They kidnapped Christians. Ooh. They enslaved Christians. Ooh. And they were supported by the government of the north. Wow. I'm not lying. He's lying. Liar, liar, liar. Liar, liar. Stop lying. Don't believe me. <laughs> Don't lie, you liar. If you think I'm lying, yeah. get out your yeah. phone right, right now and Google what I am saying. Google, it, Mr. Google the genocide Google it, Mr. of South Sudan. Hey, Mr. Do it yourself. Do it right now. Yeah, do it, do it. Go. Oh, wait. Ah, he said, I know. I, I know. He said, ah, I know. I see, he knows. Okay, so, so he, he lied. lied purposely. Okay. Yeah. Again. Yeah. And talked about the evil coming. Again. And again, yeah. we find that Muslims are willing to lie about what they know yes. in the park. Again. And again, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm quite sure. Mr. Bean, be nice that way. How about the topic? About the topic. If only you were telling the truth. The Christian, yeah. the Christian, the people who love peace and blood, they are responsible for 50 million in Indian and South America, 100 million in Indian North America, 180 million African as a slave, 88% die and was thrown into the Atlantic Ocean. This is all uh, Christian. Who, w W one World War War one and W uh, World War two as well. Who killed over 20 million Aborigines in Australia and New Zealand, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and France? The French Christian killed over two million Algerian. W Bush W Bush and Blair killed two over two million Iraqi. They destroy the country. They destroy the Middle East. And and what did they do? They just take interest, strategic interest with just the oil. Uh, Afghan, Bosnia, Palestine, and Africa. What are you talking about? Your God even kill himself to, to save you. All the problems of the world. Uh, I, I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Of course you are you know, fine. Please. Okay, allow me to reply. You heard, you heard his litany. Let's just, let's just be clear. I was arguing that we should not make space for that backward system of law called Sharia. Yeah. Why? Because that repugnant, backward, savage system of law yeah. called Sharia exist, yeah. institutes, <laughs> institutes <laughs> concepts like dimitude, <laughs> slavery, it constitutes ideas like jihad and conquering lands that were not their own. Now, what did he quote? He did quote, he did quote a litany of things that he ascribes to Christians. My question is, where is that taught for Christians to follow in the Bible? Where does Jesus teach me to have slaves? He doesn't. But Muhammad had slaves. Muhammad sold slaves. Muhammad allowed his followers to... And he's nodding his head. He's agreeing. He's not bothering to deny it. He allowed those slaves. Let me finish. Let me finish. So, in terms of litanies of crimes, he points out the Christian slave trade what about the 1400 years of the Islamic slave trade that is still going on today? He talked about World War I and World War II. These were wars by nationalists. He talked about the policies of President Bush. President Bush is the president of a secular, liberal state, constitutionally, not a Christian theocracy. Let's look at Saudi Arabia and Iran. Those are two Islamic theocracies. How many people have died? How many people put on trial for witchcraft? Sharia law is something that is based upon Muhammad's example, quoting the crimes of Christians, and I admit Christians committed crimes are two different things. Sharia law teaches jihad. Sharia law teaches slavery. Sharia law teaches apostasy laws. It teaches persecution of religious minorities. Jesus does not. Perfect. Jesus, peace upon him. He came not to destroy or abolish the law. The law of Moses, which contain, what does it contain, Mr. Bean? Kill witches, kill homosexual, kill fortune teller. Ah, right. That's for whoever hit his father and disobey his father and mother. That's for cursing parent. That's for adultery. That's for fornication. Be nice, Mr. Bean. Kill non-believer. Two Chronicle 15, 12, 13. Kill false prophet. Zachariah 13, 3. Kill entire town is one person worship another god. Geometry 13, 13, 19. Kill women who are not virgin on their wedding night. 
the Dumuri 22-21, kill follower of other religion. The Dumuri 13-7-12, the Dumuri 17-2-5, that's for blasphemy. Leviticus 24-10-16. Kill infidel and gay should die. Romans 1 24 32. Kill anyone who approach the tower can say. What, what they, they say? Tower? 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 There's more. Oh, there's more. There's more. Oh, yeah. Your God yeah. kill the curious in yeah. Samuel 6, 19, 20. Kill by a lion, 1 King 20, 35, 36. Kill in the good Samaritan, 2 Samuel 6, 3, 7. Now murdering children, kill son, sons of sinner. Isaiah 14, 21. So even the, the, if the sinner, you, God telling you, kill the son of sinner, even they are innocent. God kill children, Hosea 9, 11, 16. Kill men, women and children, Ezekiel 9, 5, 17. This is, this is, yeah, and this is what Jesus come to apply, not to abolish or destroy. Kill old men and young men. Jeremiah 51, verse 20, 26. God kill the children of sinners. Let, let, let me finish. Let me finish. Because the list, the list, the list is long. Can we reply? Your, your God, your God is more than evil God. Who wants blood? He sent his own son to be killed. So he, he said, the sinners. Okay. So, you all heard the list. Yeah, yeah. I want to just quote one from that list. Okay. The one in Romans. What in Romans? Right. Romans 1, 24 to 32. All right. I'm going to read Romans yeah. chapter 1, verses 24 to 32. Yeah. And I want you to scream in my face yeah, yeah. when you hear the command that Christians receive to kill people. Okay. I want you to literally scream in my face. Okay. In fact, yeah. when you hear me quote the verse in the Bible yeah. that commands Christians to kill, yes. I invite you all to come and spit upon me. Ah, okay, okay. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every one of you. Yeah. And Leon can punch me in the face. <laughs> all right. Okay? Listen. No, shut up. Shut up. Right? Listen oh, wait, carefully. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen carefully. Oh, yeah. Listen, he said that the Bible commands me to kill gays. Yes, he said that. And he quoted a passage in Romans. I am going to read that passage to you. Okay. And when you hear the command that says that I should kill people, yeah. come and spit on me. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, spit oh. on me. Okay. Well, Listen. Okay. Are you ready? Are you, are you the ready? Build up. Build it up. Build, build up the flame. Build, build the saliva. Yeah, yeah. Ready? All right. You're listening. You're listening. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're waiting for a command yes. that says Christians God. kill people. Yeah, yeah, we're waiting Listen. for that. We're, wait, we're waiting for that. Go on, Bob, tell us. Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their heart to impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them, for they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creatures rather than the Creator, okay. who is blessed forever. Amen. Oh, uh, no one so far. Okay, uh, moving on. You're safe, Bob. <laughs> For this reason, yeah. God gave them over to degrading passions. For their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman okay. and burned in their desire towards one another. Men with men committing indecent acts wow. and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. Okay. Wait, no one, no one so far. No, no, okay, no, moving yeah. on. No, no Christian, no, no. no and no, just no, as no, they no, did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper, being filled with all unrighteousness, wickedness, greed, evil, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, 
malice. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful. Still nobody. No one, no one. Nobody. This is his last chance because it's the last oh, verse. No chance. Oh. Oh. And although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of right. death, right. they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. No command. Did anyone hear a command for me to kill anyone? Nothing. 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 So he lied. <laughs> he lied. <laughs> Mr. Now, Mr. Bing, stop lying. When you finish, allow me to speak. So, I will, I will. Stop lying, stop lying, Mr. Bing. He gave, he gave a great list yeah, yeah. <laughs> of Old Testament commands yeah. to punish, to kill. Yes, it is. I don't deny them. They're all there. Yeah. Let's just say that for the sake of argument. Because right. we haven't got time to expose the lie in everyone like I just did in Romans. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be here all day. <laughs> but the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, and this is the mistake that Muslims make every Sunday, week in, week, week out. out. For the past 25 they, years. For the, the past, past 25, 25 years. years. Yeah. We Christians <laughs> have told the Muslims yeah. the same thing yeah. week in and <laughs> week, week out. out. But they never listen. <laughs> they, they never listen. take it on board. Uh, okay. Wait, no, I'm finished. We Christians believe in we read the Bible through a paradigm of covenants. Yeah. We have a covenant system. So we read the Old Testament because it is the old covenant. Yeah. Christ said I that none what not one jot or tickle of the law, as in the Old Testament law, will pass away until everybody say who's a Christian until until all is fulfilled. All fulfilled Mr. Bean. That means Mr. that the old covenant is fulfilled and replaced with what? A new covenant. Which means that the laws of the Old Testament are fulfilled in the new covenant. They do not disappear, but they are transformed in their meaning. They are transformed in their purpose because the purpose of the Old Covenant was to point to the Messiah. That's right. And the Messiah was Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our Sabbath. That's right. He is our atoning sacrifice. That's right. He is the faithful Israel that meets a holy God. Perfect. It is in him that the Old Covenant is fulfilled yep. and a new covenant is established. Go and down. what is the law of that new covenant? Love, hope, and faith. Thank you you finish? Yes. That's what he needs to address. Yeah. Not misquoting the Bible <laughs> based upon a misunderstanding of the covenant system. Uh, your turn, Mr. Bean. You finish? Yes. First, you admit that it's all in the Bible. I didn't bring anything from outside. Second, you are a follower of Paul, which he actually create uh, a, a line for you other than the line of obedience the line of grace uh, and you are follower of paul and paul actually he's a deceiver liar who deny everything wow. everything allow me allow me allow me allow me allow me to finish allow me allow me jesus <laughs> tell me if i am wrong all right jesus all right. said you're wrong you're wrong, jesus you're wrong. Said, don't think I come to abolish the law and the prophet. Yeah. That means he's obeyed by the verses I quote the killing. And he is, because he is, can do nothing of himself. He cannot apply this law. Yeah. And actually, whoever, whoever omit any of the law, which is killing and savage killing for all the sinner, actually he will be called the least and the kingdom of God. In the Quran, it yeah. says he made halal please, what may, was please, illegal. Please, 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 don't interrupt me. I'll, I'll get that, I'll get that. The law, get the, that. Law, the law, you cannot <laughs> get out of the law because the law actually apply for the, uh, the Jew. And Jesus, he didn't come with a new law for you or a new covenant. Because the, the covenant, it was between 
God and Abraham and the covenant is eternal to the day of judgment. So you are people are sticking to Jesus and you are not, not allowed to do that. Second, the fulfillment. Fulfills the law that applies the law, not cancels the law. Jesus, he cannot fulfill anything because he come to fulfill, uh, to apply the law. But he wasn't able to do because he was beaten, dragged and crucified according to you on the cross. How can he apply something if he is not able to protect himself from the soldier who even rob him off his, his clothes and he died, he humiliated death and even the father according <clears throat> to you, he want him dead and he allowed the humiliation so he can get the blood to forgive you because you are forgive a sinner. You. To save you, you are a to sinner. save you. To and save your, you. your Bible, you your Bible actually de degrade all of you and degrade all the prophet and degrade God as a bloody God Dracula. who want only blood. Yes. No blood, no salvation. Dracula, Dracula. Shame on you. Shame <laughs> on all of you. you. We we rebuke you. Okay, so allow me to reply. Above. For you. Now notice. Because there's no brain. Allow me to reply. <laughs> Notice, yeah. his whole argument is based upon the idea that the Old Testament law was valid at the time of Jesus. Which means that the Old Testament law was preserved at the time of Jesus. And we have plenty of evidence of what those scriptures look like because, because in 250 BC, the Old Testament was translated into Greek in the Septuagint. Which means that the Islamic claim that the Old Testament was lost and corrupted collapses. Furthermore, furthermore, how is it now that we've established the validity of the Old Testament as a faithful document that God who establishes temple sacrifices in the Old Covenant doesn't carry them forward with Muhammad. Why did we get from Old Testament Mosaic temple sacrifice revealed by Moses, testified to by the Septuagint, existent in a codice that we know has been preserved, that Muhammad said, go to if you're any doubt, and that he is supposedly a prophet like Moses, yeah. but has no mention of the temple or the temple sacrifices. In other words, there is a lack of continuity between Muhammad, the false prophet of Arabia, and Moses, the true prophet of God. Perfect. Now, he mentioned Abraham. He mentioned Abraham correctly. Yeah. Because the reality is, as Paul said, and we're going to read his words shortly, but I just want to address something that the Dawah team do in the park all the time. The Dawah team present something that Christians believe in as if it's something that we should be ashamed of. I want to tell you, I am proud to follow the Apostle Paul. I follow the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter and the Apostle James and the Apostle Thomas because it is on the Apostles and the Prophets that my identity rests. The pillar of the truth is in the church and the church is built on the prophets and the apostles. Perfect. So Paul said, and I'll read it to you. I'm Bob. Look, he's listening to you. Brethren, I speak in terms of human relations. Even though it is only a man's covenant, yet when it has been ratified, no one sets it aside or adds conditions to it. He's making a contrast between how humans create legal contracts and how God has created a legal contract with Israel. You don't add to it, you don't take it away. What's this is from Galatians, Galatians chapter 3, reading from verse 15 to verse 18. Now, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say, and to deeds, 
as referring to many, but rather to one and to your seed, that is Christ. What I am saying is this, the law which came 430 years later does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God as to nullify the promise. For if the inheritance is based on law, it is no longer based on a promise, but God has granted it to Abraham by means of a promise. In other words, the covenant that Christ fulfills is the covenant that it was established by Abraham, with Abraham, and the Old Testament law shepherds the people of Israel towards the fulfillment of this covenant. And he says that this contradicts Jesus. So let me give you an example of where Jesus says the same thing. In the Gospels, a man comes up to Jesus, a rich man, and he says, good teacher, what must I do to be saved? And Christ replies, why do you call me good? No one is good but God. You know the commandments. And he lists some of them. And then the rich man says, all of these things I have kept from my youth. And then Jesus says, one thing thou lackest. Sell all that you have and follow me. And the rich man went away sad because he had many possessions. So Jesus is saying that keeping the law is not sufficient, but following Jesus is. So Paul's teaching lines up with Jesus's teaching. He has once again simply shown his ignorance of the scriptures and of the Christian faith, just like he did with Old and New Covenants. Your turn. Yeah. Okay, my question, why then Jesus said, don't think I come to abolish the law and the prophet. First, he come to apply, that means he come to fulfill and to keep. This is one. And now I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, and please concentrate with me. I'm gonna give you the evidence that Jesus peace upon him, warn you of Paul. You will read in John 5:43 warning about Paul who come with his own name. Paul, he, he come and he abolish everything with his, with his name. All his letter is from, I Paul, I tell you, I Paul, I tell you. And he all contradicts Jesus teaching. Like Jesus teach obedience, Paul teach grace. Now I'm gonna give you reference so you check for yourself. Fulfill Matthew 5.17, law and prophet fulfill them according to Paul, abolish Roman 10.4, Christ, end of the law, Galatians 3.10.13, Ephesians 2.14.15. So Jesus teach to keep the law and fulfill, and, and Paul and Roman and Galatians and Ephesians saying that Jesus is the end of the law, which he's inventing himself and deceive all of you. A clean food, Act 10, 14, 15, 27, against Roman 14, 20. All food is clean, according to Mr. Paul, the deceiver, the shaitan. Matthew 5, 17, 20. Ephesians 2, against Paul, Ephesians 2, 14, 15. Leviticus 11, 7. Shut it. Okay, can you please? Of course I read it. Of course I read it. And please don't interrupt me because I, I, get, I lose it. <laughs> Leviticus 11, 7. Teaching of Jesus according to the law against Ephesians 2, 14, 15. 1 Corinthians 10, 23. All are lawful. Again, Deuteronomy. 14, 7, 8. Isaiah 65, 2, 4, 67, 17. 
against Galatian 5 to 5. Uh, now Abraham Covenant. Abraham Covenant, which I talk about. Obedience against grace. Deuteronomy uh, 28 against Roman 614, Corinthian 920. Fully obey Lord your God and follow his commandment. With set you up. And what the, what what Paul teach? Yeah. You are not under the law, but under grace. And this is totally against not only Jesus, <laughs> but against Abraham, against Moses, against the law of God. Paul, I warn you of Paul, as Jesus warned you of Paul. Can I reply? Just one one more. <laughs> Salvation. Yeah. If you follow Jesus and follow the law, it will give you salvation and eternal life. Obedience, good deed, keeping the law with love. The salvation of, of Paul is by grace through the full blood of Christ. See the difference? Blood of Christ according to Paul. Testify of gospel of grace. And Paul, I testify at 1 Corinthians 10, 23. I testify to the gospel of grace of God. Another gospel and all things is lawful. Okay, this is the lie of Paul. <laughs> and you are left. You are but on the, the, on the day of judgment. You're talking you, nonsense. You're talking nonsense. You talking you nonsense. Pray, just let me finish my okay. verse. Okay. I, I didn't interrupt you. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> you know, he talked about Prophet Muhammad. I didn't mention Prophet Muhammad. I bring reference always from the Bible. Yeah, always, Don't always, follow always, Jesus always, yeah. teaching. Yeah. Follow uh, Jesus, Jesus teaching. Who teach you the Lord our God is one, not three and one. No Allah, no and Allah, no Allah. Get eternal life with the Lord, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. But please apply. I beg you sure. to reply. So allow me to reply. Uh, Bob. Firstly, I'll just say it again. Yeah. I'm a Christian. I am not ashamed of the Apostle Paul. Yeah. I don't know how many now, he tried to say, and I'm going to just use one example right. to expose the fallacy and the biblical ignorance that we see by examples like this brother Yahya, here, Yahya, 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 by brother Yahya, here in the park all the time. Not all the time, I go home every all day. All the time, the Dawah team talk utter crap about the Bible all the time. because they never bother to read it. <laughs> they just read an Islamic pamphlet about it. <laughs> That's their problem. They watch YouTube videos by Zaki and Ike and suddenly think they're a scholar. They're not. The fact of the matter is, we Christians understand, and I'm going to use one example to demonstrate. In the Old Covenant, certain foods are deemed unclean. That is correct. There's plenty of biblical verses that he can show you. I'm not disputing any of it. But Jesus himself said, and can I quote, this is Jesus' words. After Jesus called the crowd to him, he said to them, hear and understand, it is not what enters into the mouth that defiles the man, but what proceeds out of the mouth which defiles the man. So Jesus is saying, so Jesus is saying that foods do not make you ritually unclean, but the things in your heart, your lusts, your anger, your envy, your gluttony, your wrath, these things make you unclean. All the Muslims who practice wudu before their prayers, <laughs> who think that washing a certain way can make them holy yeah, yeah, yeah. before a holy God, they need to listen to the words of Jesus. That's right. Your wudu yeah. cannot make your heart clean if it is filled with avarice and hatred for your fellow man. No amount of circumcision can make you good to come into the presence of a holy God. Amen. He said that it was Paul who said that all food 
was unclean, not Jesus. Oh, really? Well, we showed you where Jesus said it, yeah. but let's actually show you which of the apostles was the first to teach about it. And I'll tell you it was. It wasn't the beloved, the blessed, our holy teacher, Paul. No, it was Petros, the rock, Peter, who taught that all foods were clean, not Petras, and it was given to him as a revelation. I'll just read it. We're cutting in halfway into the vision that Peter had in a dream. Objects like a great sheet coming down, lowered by a four corners to the ground, and there were in it all kinds of four-footed animals and crawling creatures of the earth and the birds of the air. A voice came to him, get up, Peter! Peter, Peter. What name was that? What name was that? Peter! Peter. Peter. That's right. Get up, Peter, yeah. kill and eat. And what was Peter's reply? But Peter said, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything unholy and unclean. Peter is still living in the culture of the past. And he's arguing with who? Who does he think he's talking to? He thinks he's talking to the Lord. So not Paul, but the Lord. And what does the Lord say? The Lord says, Bob. The Lord says this. By no means, Lord, have I ever eaten anything unholy and unclean. Again, a voice came to him a second time. What God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. So God was the one who took away the idea of clean food and unclean food. <laughs> but interestingly, interestingly, the lists given by Moses and the lists given by Muhammad don't line up because Muhammad said you can eat camel and Moses said you can't. So Moses and Muhammad are not speaking to the same God. That's right. But we Christians see all food as clean. Yeah. It's in your heart that makes you clean and unclean. Amen. The apostles' teaching lines up with Jesus' teaching. Now for the third time, brother, try again. Try again, try again, Mr. Bean. Game over, Mr. Bean. Try again. Third time. Third time. Third time. Third time lucky. Thank you very much. Third time lucky. Third time lucky. I'm going to remind you, I'm going to remind you about about Jesus' warning of Paul, then I will I will answer you accordingly. Jesus' warning of Paul, John 5, 43. Please read it. Now let's talk about Jesus. Have have Jesus not have Jesus ever eat pork? No, because the Jew they don't eat pork. He's right. And Jesus, he was circumcised. Yes, he was. They, he was did. Didn't, didn't Paul abolish the circumcision by saying whoever observes the law is under curse? Yes, he did. So Jesus coming to apply and he applied it on himself and Paul are taking different route away from Jesus. And he say he is proud of following Paul. I but, love Paul. Yeah, we love Paul. Okay. We love, we love, Paul. Paul. Lo love him. He will lead you to hellfire. <laughs> well, you will, you will be tossed, <laughs> roast, and burn in hell. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, as I, I said, he's fulfilled the covenant of Abraham by he was circumcised and he didn't eat pork. And even the Jew till nowadays, they never eat pork exactly like Muslim. We Muslim circumcised. <laughs> we are circumcised. We are. We are, uh, please, 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 we are circumcised. Uh, this is very rude for of you. I'm talking, you didn't interrupt him. You interrupt me. You are very rude. Very, very rude. And I don't like this. Let, don't cut me. Don't, don't cut me. I have respect and love to all of you. I don't hate anyone. I don't hate anyone. We love you too. We love you too. Yeah, yeah. I come here. I come here. I'm not. I'm not a member of any Dawah team, I come by myself. I read your Bible from page one to page 
uh, last, uh, it took me four years, greater than not, I don't rely on Ahmed Didat or Zakir Nayak or anything. I rely on myself. Okay, let me ask you, sir. I He talked, he talked about only food, but he didn't talk about the law. I don't understand why you, why you forget to talk about the law, which Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish or destroy, and you talk only about the food. Okay, what about Peter? You, didn't Jesus said to Peter, away from me, shaitan? Yes. Didn't he said so? Yes. So, uh, Jesus, peace upon him, according to your Bible, when he was talking to his apostle, who? The apostle, who? When Jesus most needed them, they fled away and they deserted him. They fled away and he, they let him, they let him bear the consequences of the humiliation on the cross, which you glorify the symbol of a humiliation of a Jesus. Second, your Bible, your Bible degrade God from God to man, from God to lamb. According to Revelation 5, 6, 5, verse number 6, Re Revelation again, 5, verse number 13, and Revelation again, 17, 14. Why don't you check the reference and tell me that your God become a lamb, become an animal for his blood, because your God not able to forgive the sinner when they repent, your God he wants Jesus to, to, to be, to, to die on the cross because he loves a blood. Can I reply? Oh, please do. So, ladies and gentlemen. Third time, third time lucky. For the third time, <laughs> he's attempted to create this contrast between Paul and Jesus. But this time he was so vague, I haven't even got an example to get hold of. I can, but let, 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 no, let me finish. Let me finish. The reality is, ladies and Jesus, Ladies in Jesus, Jesus. sorry, sorry. Lady, lady and and maybe Jesus. I need. Maybe. Well, they're all ladies in Jesus. <laughs> so let's let's just deal with it. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ had a debate with the Pharisees, and they asked the Pharisees asked Jesus, "Good teacher, which is the greatest commandment?" And Jesus said, "To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbour as yourself." Upon these two laws, all the commandments of Moses hang. The reason why this discussion occurred was because within Palestinian Judaism at the time, there was a debate about which laws you use to interpret other laws. And many communities emphasized the ritualistic, the temple laws. But Jesus was saying that it was the ethical laws which are the most important. Jesus said, as he washed the feet of his apostles, that I give you now a new commandment, that you love and serve one another. Because with the establishment of the new covenant, there was an establishment of a new community. The Gentiles were grafted onto the people of Israel. They could now become part of the holy people. And our commandment is to love. Because he who keeps the commandment of love keeps all the Old Testament laws. You don't steal from those you love. You don't murder those you love. You don't lie about those you love. You honour your mother and father if you love them. You don't blaspheme God if you love him. Love is the way to keep the law. It is the fulfilment of the law. Now, he threw in, out of any context, the fact that Christ said to Peter, Get ye behind me, Satan. Yes, he said that. You all heard him say that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I did. But he didn't tell you what came before that. Ah. Please, let's just look at what came before that. 
Let's fight to no, 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 no. <laughs> Listen, this is what Jesus said. The time is coming when the Son of Man shall be handed over to those in authority and he shall be whipped and beaten and killed and he will rise on the third day. And Peter said, Lord, be it far from you, it is not worthy of you. And Jesus said, get ye behind me, Satan. Now, let's think for a moment. Which other prophet do I know of that said that it is not befitting that Jesus should die on a cross? I think Mohammed. Oh, Mohammed did! Which means, which means, which means that Jesus says to Mohammed, Get ye behind me, Satan! And the Apostle Paul said this, because we're seeing that Jesus' teaching lines up with Paul's teaching. And Paul said, if I, or an apostle, or even an angel of light, should teach to you another gospel, let them be accursed. So, Jesus says to Muhammad, get ye behind me, Satan. And Paul says, that the angel that spoke to Muhammad was accursed. Paul's teaching and Jesus' teaching line up. Perfect. Let's just list some of the things that Jews do that Muslims don't do. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jews worship towards Jerusalem. No, this is your point. Jews pray three times a day. Jews keep a Sabbath. Muslims don't keep a Sabbath. Jews pray towards Jerusalem. Muslims don't pray towards Jerusalem. Jews read the Old Testament in the synagogue. Muslims don't pray, don't read the Old Testament in the synagogue. This kind of fallacious argument. Well, we do it and the Jews do it. Well, what about all the things that the Jews do that you don't do? Like not eating camel. Yes. <laughs> it's a fallacious argument yeah. made yeah. by two-bit pseudo-intellectualism that is based upon reading the Bible out of any context. I'll let you go one last time. You can have the last word and then I'll do a wrap up and we'll stop. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Where should, wrap up, wrap up. where should I start? I start from the last or from the beginning. First, we Muslim, when we first pray, we used to pray to Jerusalem for two years. Then the Prophet, peace upon him, as there is three holy sites on earth to pray toward. And we are in obedience to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who order us after praying toward Jerusalem to change, to change. To change ah. Ah. Okay, change. This is, change the prayer. This is, okay, this okay. is, this is, this is obedience. This is, obe ah, okay. this is, I said there are three holy sites on earth. The first one is uh, in Mecca, which in your by you find it in your Bible in Paran, which if you want uh, to investigate about that Moses took the Jew even to Paran to pilgrim, and you you will uh, I will I will advise you to listen to uh, a Jewish scholar. His name is Avi Lepikin, Avi Lepikin about the pilgrimage of the Jew to Mecca. Even uh, Yaqub, peace upon him. He used when he fled away from uh, uh, from uh, Jerusalem. He went to uh, to Saudi Arabia and lived there uh, next to Ismail uh, uh, Ismail, uh, the, the brother of uh, the son of uh, of Abraham. This is matter of age. and the third uh, holy site is uh, the the Prophet Mosque. Second, he said uh, what uh, draw my attention. Don't kill whom whom you love. Don't murder whom you love. And according to you, your God so loves the world, he, he sent his own son to die on the cross. So pre-plan killing his son to forgive you. So you contradicting yourself. Even your Bible teach the son, they don't bear the guilt of the father. The father 
they don't bear the guilt of the son. So how come your father sending his son to bear the guilt of other? And why couldn't your God forgive the sinner when they repent for free as long as he loves the world? But he don't love the world. He don't, don't love his son. What we know from the Bible that your God only loves the blood. He wants the blood just to forgive. No blood, no salvation. Can you please laugh? So I left with you. Script, it's sad. It's not matter of life. This is the reality. God sent his own son. He gave his own son. That means he abandoned his son to be killed. And Jesus, even on the cross, well, according to your Bible, what did he shout? Why you abandoned me? Why you forsaken me? Why you betrayed me? Why you let me down? Why you didn't save me from the cup of death, which I, I dig my head on the floor? Oh, most of the night said you save me Jesus he never come willingly to die because if he was willing to die he wouldn't pray to the father to be saved what's wrong with you you're laughing at yourself you're laughing at me let you laughing at who are you fooling who are you fooling read your Bible with your with your shut it read your Bible with open mind with open open heart Jesus, the, the commandment to yeah. love your God who art in heaven, not on earth. Jesus said, the Lord, when you go to your room, pray to your Lord who is unseen and who can see you and he will reward you who art in heaven. He didn't teach you that the Lord, he's walking around with you and doing caca when he needs to do. Lord, you, you're degrading God to a human who eat and do caca. What's wrong with you? God is not like you. And Isaiah, it teach the Lord. God is one and so no one like him. And the Jesus teach the Lord. The Father is greater than the Son, greater than all. I always say that. What's wrong with you? Reflect upon what I'm saying. Jesus' greatest commandment, Jesus, the Thank Lord you, our yeah. God is one, not one and three. Thank you, yeah, What's yeah. wrong with you? Thank you yeah, one yeah. is not like one and three. <laughs> and you, one plus one plus one, it's never <laughs> equal to one. What's wrong with you? I beg you to f just reflect. <laughs> it's not about replying to me, replying to yourself. Yeah, reply. Yeah. Reply. Yeah, reply. reply. Okay, yeah, ladies yeah, and gentlemen, yeah, he said that one plus one sorry, plus I one is not one, it's always three. Yeah, he said so that. let me ask every Muslim here, yeah. if I have That's a half Quran, yeah. a Dori Quran, and a Wash Quran, how many Qurans do I have? Answer, answer, answer. There you go. <laughs> So, so, so the next point that he made, the next point that he made, one of the other points that he made, let me, let me, was that Muslims, let him finish, let him finish. Let, no, I'm wrapping up and then I'm stopping, the next point that he made was that Muslims have three holy sites, Oh, yeah. Jerusalem, Mecca and Medina yeah, he said that. and that they worship towards Jerusalem for two years and then change the Kaaba yeah. towards Mecca. <laughs> we didn't so in other words, there's absolutely nothing wrong with changing. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with changing. There's nothing wrong with changing. So, and that's not all that they changed. It used to be that the Muslims could drink alcohol okay. and then oh. they stopped drinking alcohol. Oh. Oh. They didn't say that, did they? I know, I know. The reality is, as Christians, whilst we honour greatly the place where our Lord walked and was born as holy, and we treasure it in our hearts, the real Jerusalem is found in the kingdom of God, and that kingdom is found in the treasure of your own heart by the way that you live, by your upholding of justice. That is holiness. That is the holy sight. Search for the treasure within yourselves and bring it forward into the world so that every corner of the UK might be the new Jerusalem. Perfect. That every corner of Europe might be the new Jerusalem. And so that pagan temple in Mecca 
<laughs> Where the Muslims kiss a black rock. <laughs> That pagan temple where they kiss a black rock in imitation of pagans might become holy because rather than cursing Jews and Christians in their prayers, they may bless them instead. Now, because if you read the Fatah, they curse the Christians. They curse the Jews. Five times a day. Five times a day. Five times a day. It isn't hatred in our hearts, Nothing. it's hatred in theirs. Yes. And Jesus said that what comes out of your heart is what makes you unclean. Amen. That's what makes you unclean. Now he also said, he also said, he also said, he also said, he also said that Jesus said the Father is greater than I. And most assuredly, our Lord said exactly that. But he also said this. Are you all listening? Are you listening, Yaya? For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. So if you honor the Father as God, yep. how should you honor the Son as God? What do you get? He didn't study his Bible. <laughs> He's just quoting <laughs> verses out of context. Christ said the Father is greater than I yes. because the Son became a man. Relax, relax, relax. relax. Because the Son became a man. And all men must serve God the Father of servants, and that is what Jesus our Lord did. Furthermore, he quoted Old Testament prophets, Zechariah, Isaiah, Yahya. I don't hear Allah in those names, but I do hear the name of Yahweh. Yahweh is the God of the Old Testament prophets. Muhammad took these names, yeah. incorporated them into, into the Quran yeah, without, without understanding what those names actually meant. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Yahya remembers, Yahweh remembers. Yahweh is faithful. These names speak of a foreign god to Islam. Not Allah, Yahweh. And he mentioned that our Qiblas changed towards Mecca. Well, I'm sorry, but the historical evidence contradicts you. The fact of the matter is, a study by Dan Gibson demonstrates that the earliest mosques of the Muslim community point towards Petra, not Mecca. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing, and he can have the last word and then I'm going. You have a simple choice. You can pick up your Bible, you can study it for yourselves, or you can listen to the nonsense <laughs> that is repeated by Yaya and others like him in the park who quote voters because like Midi Dat and Zakia Knight and Shabir Ali do, and they never bother to read them. We Christians need to start learning our faith and standing up for it. Creating an identity that people feel that they can join. And that means standing up to Islam and the lies spread by Muslims against our apostles that we love. Don't let them fool you by speaking our truth as if you should be ashamed. If you know it's the truth, own it with pride. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'll let you finish and then we'll stop. Uh, Thank you. There's a video, there's video for you, you there's video for you yourself with Dan Gibson. And I already put all the detail out of, of the Bible about Paran and I refute Dan Gibson on a couple of his, uh, his video. And you can read it and you can log in on Dan Gibson and you will find it under the, the name Sayyid F11. It's all there, references, uh, and everything are there. Even your Bible says that the holy, 
the holy Mecca, uh, the police and the, the, the unbelievers, they are not allowed to go there, which this is what happened now. Even according to the Bible, the Old Testament, it, uh, uh, somebody who's not circumcised and not non-believer, he not allowed to step in the land over there. Uh, as you said, you attack my prophet, you attack the, the obedience of, of the Muslim, the turning away from uh, Orshalem toward Mecca. Mecca was built, was built by Abraham and Ismail, where Ismail was lived and grow up in Paran. In Paran, you will find it again. I can. I always, when I say something, I give reference. And even on the comment section, I always give reference. You can check under the name of Sayyid F11. Paran, Paran, which is in Qadar, which is in Saudi Arabia. And I already told you, the scholar, the Jew scholar, Avi Lipkin, he talked about it. You can. You can check on YouTube and you will find it. And maybe in the future, we can we can talk about it again. And if you like me to talk about it now, I have it all here. No, no, we're stopping after. We stop. Thank you, thank you. Anyway, regarding the judgment, Jesus will not judge by the Jew, but the Jew who he come to and they disobey him and turn away from him. But he's not going to judge everyone because on the day of a judgment, every prophet will come with his people behind him and he will testify in front of God against them. Every prophet will testify against his own people and it's not for other prophet to testify about other. But as we are the last nation, we will be able to testify because we have the Quran and God told us about the story of all the prophets who come with only one message. The Lord our God is one God, worship Him and obey Him. And you are get, Christian are confused by worshiping the Son, the worshiper, instead of the worship God. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Come to Christ before it's too late. Yeah, yeah. You need to really study the Bible. Then. Yes, please. Uh, that's what I'm okay. doing. And I guess you, you appreciate. You, 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 you appreciate. You, you, guess what you, you, strike, you strike me as a much nicer person than most of that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. You are. You are Mr. Bean. We love okay. you, Mr. Bean. Okay, we're back, Richard.